Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. All praise is due to Allah who has blessed us with the month of Ramadan. This life, in a sense, involves two things. Of course, we could look at it in many different ways. But one way we could look at this life, it involves gaining as much ajr or thawab to benefit our soul once we leave this world. Once this body is, is no more, then there's no more opportunity to use it to gain edger for ourselves. Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, he said this body is like a net that's gathering edger. And once the body is gone, that net is gone. And this accruing forgiveness. None of us are perfect. We sin, we sin sometimes with our knowledge, sometimes unknowingly. And so we try to do the things that will expiate or wipe out our sins. And there's no greater opportunity for these two things to gain ajr or thawab or reward for our souls and to wipe out our sins than Ramadan. And this is, these are the greatest, perhaps the greatest manifestations of Allah Ta'ala's mercy. A Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, Ramadan, When Ramadan comes, the gates of mercy are flung open. The gates of mercy are flung open. So let's examine these two things. Let's examine the edger that Ramadan provides us an opportunity to earn for our soul. We relate the hadith of Abi Hurairah that's found in the Sahihain, in the two sound compilations of Al Bukhari and Muslim. And Abi Hurairah قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل عن ابن آدم له الحسنات بعشر أمثال إلى سبعمائة دعف قال الله عز وجل إلا الصيام فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به إنه ترك شهوته وطعامه وشرابه من أجلي للصائم فرحتان فرحة عند فتره وفرحة عند لقاء ربه so this hadith on the authority of Abi Huraira, he says that the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him said, every action undertaken by the child of Adam is for him. In other words, the prayer, the, the prayer, the zakat, the charity, the Quran, awrad, adhkar, dhikr, all of that edger is for us. And all of those deeds are multiplied 10 times over. And hasanat wa ashri Seven hundred times over. Ila sabi mi'adat. And another hadith mentions ila ad'athin kathira. Many times over and beyond that. Seven thousand, seventy thousand, seven million. Ila ad'athin kathira. Qala Allahu azza wa jal. Allah says, illa siyama fa'innuhu li. Fa'innuhu li. That is mine. When HZB, I will reward the servant with that. And then the hadith goes on, we'll return to this point. This is the point we want to make. But we'll finish the translation that verily the fasting person has left off the pursuit of his or her carnal appetite of his food and drink for my sake. A fasting person will have two delights. The delight when they break their fast and the delight the delight when they meet their Lord. And the foul odor, I think I didn't mention it. And the foul odor that sometimes comes from the mouth of the fasting person is sweeter with Allah than the fragrance of musk. But to go back to the first part of the hadith. And so Allah says, accept fasting, that's mine. 
The ulama, they mention that fasting here is exempted from the deeds that are multiplied. So, the deeds are for the child of Adam. And those deeds are multiplied 10 times over, seven, uh, 700 times over. And Allah says, except fasting. So the ulama say fasting is exempted from those deeds that have a numerical, some numerical limitation. Some numerical limitation. And why is that? Because fasting is sabr. Fasting is patient. And there are hadith that relate that. The, uh, the Prophet mentions Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a hadith in the compilation, the Jamia of Imam al Tirmidhi. As sawu nisfu sabr. Fasting is half of all patience. Ramadan, shahr al sabr. Ramadan is the month of patience. And so fasting, patience is three things. As sabr ala ta'a, was sabr, sabr al masiyah, was sabr. So patience in obeying Allah. We're patient in dealing with the difficulty that comes in obeying Allah by fasting and abandoning our food. We're patient in dealing with the difficulty that comes in avoiding the muharramah. In, in the Ramadan, food that we normally, normally is halal, is forbidden. And we're patient in dealing with the difficulty that that might bring. And sometimes it brings pain, it brings headaches, stomach aches, dizziness, joint pains. And we're patient in dealing with that pain. So Ramadan is patient. It's 29 or 30 days, it's all day. Prayer is five minutes, maybe. It could be, it could be longer if the Imam recites a long time. It could be five minutes for Fajr. Hajj is four or five days and during the day, most of the time isn't involved in the manasseh, in the rites of the hajj. Most of the time is free time. Zakat is two minutes, you write the check. Even if you have a farm and you're going to get some sheep from your, you reach the nisab for sheep and you go and get your sheep and that's it. You gather five, 10 minutes, grab a couple of sheep, give it to the zakat collector, it's done. Go into your store, your safety deposit box, get gold, it's gone. But usually you just write a check. It's done, that cat, done. But fasting is all day, every day for 29 or 30 days. So it takes patience. And so why is the reward of patience have no numerical limit? What is the reward of, of, of excuse me, why is the reward of fasting, why does it have no numerical limit? Because patience, has no numerical limit. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna mi yuwaffa sabirun ajrahum bi ghayri hisab. Bi ghayri hisab. The, the patient ones will be given their reward with no numerical limit. Also, we are limited. Our lifetime is limited. Our capabilities are limited. We might want to fly, we can't fly. We can't just start flapping our wings like a bird. We might want to stay on the water for two hours. We can't do it like a fish. We might want to jump over the building <laughs> like Superman. We can't do it. We're limited. And so anything emanating from us is limited. And so the reward from the fast that comes from us is limited. Allah is no limitations. hudud. There's no limitations to Allah. There's no limitations to his power. There's no limitations to his knowledge. Our knowledge is limited. Our knowledge is acquired. Allah Ta'ala's knowledge is not acquired. Our knowledge is limited based on our experience, what we've been exposed to. Allah Ta'ala needs no exposure to anything to know it. His knowledge is unlimited and therefore, the reward for that which is his was sawmuli, asiyamuli when it is me. Fasting is mine. I will reward the servant from my unlimited resources. Illa siyam afin huli. Inna ma yuwafasabirun ajrohum bi ghairi hisab. 
Another version of this hadith is in the, the compilation of Imam al Bukhari. And that version, the Prophet mentions, uh, Allah Ta'ala hadith pussy, where the Prophet mentions about the inspiration directly from Allah. Kulu amr ibn Adma lahu kafara. Illa siyam, illa salma, as salmu li wa na isidi. Every action undertaken by the child of Adam is an atonement for their deeds. Kafara, kulu amr ibn Adma lahu kafara. Illa siyam, except fasting, as salmu li wa na isidi. In this version, the ulama say what's exempted. From the multiplication of uh, exempted from the, the, the deeds being a kafara, that fasting rather is exempted from being a source of atonement. It's not kafara. Kul Abn Kul Adma Lahu Kafara Tun Illa Soma A Somuli Wana Sidi except fasting. So what does this mean? Sufyan bin Uyayna, one of the great scholars from the Salaf, Salaf, Rahimahullah, he says that Yom al Qiyamah, when people will come that we've wronged and take from our good deeds, as the hadith describes, min hasanati, min hasanati, he will take from his good deeds, Rabbul Madalim, compensating those we've oppressed. He says, some people, all of their good deeds will be gone. فَشَتَمَ هَذَا وَضَرَبَ هَذَا وَأَخَذَ مَا لَهَذَا They're wrong people. They've insulted this one. Some people, they're, they're, most of their life is spent insulting people. It's their, it's their profession. Insulting people. فَشَتَمَ هَذَا وَضَرَبَ هَذَا they're wrong people in various ways. So Sufyan bin Uyani says, all of their good deeds, all of their hasanat will be gone. At that point, Allah, there's still those that, oh, Allah will compensate them. And then Allah will return to them the reward from their fast. Because no one could take that because it's not ours. Kullu amn ibn adma lahu kathaaratun illa salma. The only thing some people will have left is the reward of their fast. The reward of their Quran is gone. The reward of their zakah is gone. The reward of their salah is gone. The reward of their commanding good, amr bil ma'ruf, nahi an al is gone. Awrad, azkar, gone. Everything is gone except the reward from their fast. And he says, Sufyan bin Uyayna, that is, at that point, Allah will return to them the edge of their fasting, they'll enter paradise based on the reward of their fast alone. This is the mercy of Allah in Ramadan, brothers and sisters. This is the mercy of Allah in Ramadan. Then we said, so accruing hasanat. The other ha half of the equation Getting our sins wiped out. Maghfira. Huwa shahru. Huwa shahrun. Awaluhu rahman. Awfatuhu maghfira. Wa akhiruhu itkum min al-nar. It's a month. As a man of Pharisee relates in a hadith. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Ramadan. Huwa shahru. Awaluhu rahman. The first of it is mercy. Awfatuhu maghfira. The middle is forgiveness. And the last part is liberation from the hellfire. Ibn Rajab al Hanbali, in his book, Lataf al Ma'arif, he qualifies this. Lataf al Ma'arif, he has a 100 page section on Ramadan. He said, Bal kulluhu rahma, wa kulluhu mawfira, wa kulluhu itkum min al nar. All of it is mercy, all of it is forgiving, forgiveness, all of it is, is liberation from the hellfire, but these particular qualities, they predominate at those specific times of the month. In any case, look at the gates of forgiveness Allah has opened us up for us in Ramadan.
من صام رمضان إيمانا وحسابا وغفر لهم ما تقدم من ذنبه. Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with sincere faith, anticipating reward, their pious sins will be forgiven. ومن قام رمضان إيمانا وحسابا وغفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. And one who stands for worship during the nights of Ramadan, من قام رمضان with sincere faith, anticipating reward, their prior sins will be forgiven. وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ مَا تَقَدَّمَ وَمَا تَأَخْرَ مِنْ ذَنْبٍ Whoever stands for sincere, for, for, for worship during the night of power, with sincere faith anticipating a reward, the prior and subsequent sins will be forgiven. مَنْ فَطَّرَ صَائِمًا هُوَ مَوْكَانَ مَغْفِرَةً لَهُ Whoever gives the fasting person something to break their fast with, even if it's a date, their prior sins will be forgiven. And the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so great, it's related from Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu. It's a hadith to hukm al uh, uh, It's related from Abi Hurairah, but it has the ruling of coming from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because it involves the description of a reward that a Sahaba would never say on their own volition. So he says, Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, bal yukhfaru fihi illa man yadda. Everyone will be forgiven in Ramadan except one who refuses. Wa man yadda ya Abu Hurairah. Who would ever refuse Abu Hurairah? Man yadda an yastawfir Allah. One who refuses to ask Allah for forgiveness. The only thing, brothers and sisters, between you and forgiveness in Ramadan is to just ask Allah for forgiveness. Ya Allah, astaghfiruka. Astaghfiruka, ya Allah. Wa atubu ilayk. I ask your forgiveness, ya Allah. Astaghfiruka, ya Allah. That's the only thing between us and Fast, and we could go on. The entire khutbah could just be on this one subject. How many pathways has Allah opened up before us for forgiveness in Ramadan? La ilaha illallah. And so you see, gaining edge, that's what this life is. And getting our sins removed so that when we meet Allah, we're not carrying a mountain of sin on our back. Ramadan is the greatest opportunity we have for that. Take advantage, brothers and sisters. Take advantage of this time. Take advantage of these days. Take advantage of the opportunity to fast. This is a great opportunity most of humanity doesn't have. You're blessed to be a Muslim. We brag there are 2 million Muslims in the world. 1.7, 1.9, whatever. Let's say two. Take me Allahu Akbar. For the nine billion people, which means a Muslim is a small minority of humanity. Yes, there are two billion Muslims, but there are nine billion people. So the majority of people on this earth are not Muslim. So if Allah has made you Muslim, Allah has given give you a favor. Allah has given you the opportunity to fast Ramadan. Allah has given you the opportunity to have your sins forgiven. Allah has given you an opportunity to earn a, a, a undescribable, unlimited amount of edger, an opportunity he has not given to most of humanity. We should be grateful. Because if we're grateful, when your Lord proclaims, if you are thankful, I will increase you in my gifts. And if you are ungrateful, if you just dismiss this opportunity, if you take every, every excuse not to fast, if you just run away from the masjid when it's time for qiyam, man qama Ramadan. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah bless us to be amongst the shaykhiri. This is what, what the, the a final point as our time expires. 
the verses of Ramadan, they start with the duties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has imposed upon us. Ya ayyuhalladhin amanu kutiba alikum usriyam kama kutiba alikum. What does it conclude with? Revert to the end of the third verse relating to Ramadan. In order that you will be thankful for this opportunity to fast. May Allah bless us to be amongst the, the shaykhirin. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be amongst the shafirin. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be amongst the a'i'adi'i, the a'adi'in, the sa'imin, the shafirin, the mu'minin, the muttaqin, the a'alakum tattaqun, the mujtahidin, the mustaghfirin, and the mustaghfirat. I call you the word of God, and I call you the word of God, and I call you the word of God, and I call you the word of God. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المسلمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم إن الله وملائكته صلّون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا سيدنا وحبيبنا وقرة عيوننا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم May Allah bless us all. May Allah have mercy on this country. Every day we hear of another mass killing somewhere. May Allah Ta'ala have mercy on this land. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be amongst those who bring a message of of, of Comfort to the hearts of people. People's hearts are distressed. People are anxious. People are, are, are fearful. What comfort, what relieves the ancient, the anxiety in the heart? Those who believe faith, we should be the ambassadors of faith. And their hearts find comfort in the remembrance of Allah. Their hearts find comfort in the remembrance of Allah. Verily, the remembrance of Allah brings comfort to the hearts. May Allah comfort our hearts with his remembrance and may our serenity and our calm and our composure be a source of comfort for those around us which means what we have to be those who remember allah ramadan quran is a, is a dhikr tasbihatun qal al-nakhai ibrahim al-nakhai rahimahullah من شيوخ أبي هريرة أبي حنيفة رحمه الله قال النخائي تسبيحة واحدة في رمضان كألف تسبيحة فيما سواه saying سبحان الله glorified art thou oh Allah is like saying it a thousand in Ramadan is like saying it a thousand times outside of Ramadan so may we be amongst the zakirin, amongst the shakirin, amongst the sabirin, amongst the sa'imin, amongst the shakirat, wa sabirat, wa shakirat, our sisters. Allah give you tawfiq and peace.